shit. With so many buffs, rebalances, updates, changes to weapons and DLCs over the past months, it's hard to stay up to date on what's even good anymore. While constant updates are great to keep the game alive after 8 plus years, for those of us who struggle to find time to keep up, may often miss out or not hear of what's good and what is now not so good. Recent changes around shotgun spreads, assault rifle distance drop-offs, ammo pickup changes, damage increases to previously crappy weapons, and then some damage increases of just one to certain weapons, this is enough to make your head spin and potentially change your favourite weapon into garbage without you even knowing, or adversely make it better, or even elevate something that was previously shite to now god tier. Well, myself just recently having fun throwing molotovs and basking in the fiery aura until I reach a cosy berserker state with its appropriate amplified damage increase, I thought this tactic was just for the pros. Turns out I can do it myself. Well, most of the time at least. My first entry into this world was learning the best I can do with said molotovs and reaching an acceptable level that's worthy of the skill itself and the boost that it gives, bolstering an anarchist setup and buffing weapons to a higher damage tier. Then I was pointed to how to take this to the next level and fly dangerously close to the sun to achieve the nirvana of an almost maximum amount of berserker boost. As your balls grow through the process, and in my case, many are down later, a rhythm is formed and a muscle memory that removes the need to pucker your butthole as zero health approaches. The result is, as you can expect, a feeling of accomplishment, for us noobs at least, as we scantily escape the fingernails of the afterlife chlorinatus for company, and rewarded with said bonuses. Beware though, this can be short lived. A down and revive will quickly take this away from you and remove the ultimate sweet spot we are striving for. So what the hell are we to do with all of this? Well, that brings us to where we are. What is the best way to take advantage of this? For high difficulty players, this presents us with a unique opportunity to enjoy a weapon set that with the right skills and mods can achieve the once impossible. Sure, it's always been a thing to be able to one-shot headshot the common heavy SWAT enemy or apply critical hits to reach that even easier. But what about us who can't actually land headshots every time? How about a one-hit kill to the body? How about a setup that one bullet on a heavy SWAT to the kneecap or anywhere else on him downs him like an all-you-can-eat buffet at a fat convention 100% of the time? One body hit for SWATs, two for tasers, cloakers and medics, pretty tasty. Let's dive in. Now there's obviously a bunch of math that goes on here, what with percentages of health, headshot multipliers and even perk card increases, what we're essentially working towards here is to reach 960 damage or more when using three main skills. Berserker, Body Expertise and Surefire, all of which would need to be aced and we couple this with the appropriate weapons and that's our sweet spot. For those actually interested on how I was eventually able to calculate how this damage scales, I'll put that at the very end of the video, as I know it's not that interesting to many, but to me it was interesting nonetheless. We need to take the damage boost from Berserker as close to its maximum as possible. We take the multiplier from body expertise and then surefire ace to allow our weapon to penetrate enemy armor, allowing body shots to hit every single time. For Berserker, choose your poison on how to get as low as possible, but really do need to cheat death here. The way I was shown was utilizing Frenzy Basic on an Anarchist build with Molotovs like this and I achieved a 99% Berserker, enough for our numbers to add up. For the weapon, here we will go for the Ammo Hungry Assault Rifle and DMR attachments. The second you add this attachment, say goodbye to Ammo Pickup. However, way less shots should be required once we hit the sweet spot and one tap our common enemy and two tap the others. All the rifles with DMR attachments work for this, those being the AK Rifle, the AK-762, the Golden AK, the AMR-16, the Car-4, the Gewehr 3 and even the M308. The second phase in this is choosing one which can also offer the best stability and accuracy along with it to make it more reliable and fun to use, nothing quite like a laser beam with this much firepower. Here I'll be showcasing the AMR-16, achieving almost perfect stats of 96 stability and 96 accuracy. The damage we want to reach here is technically 172.3, so we'll take all the mods to increase damage to that and then everything else to max stability and accuracy with the appropriate skills in which to do the same. Another good part of this setup is that critical hits through low blow are quite pointless. Yes, they'll help with bulldozers and if you land a crit body shot on a taser or medic or cloaker, they will fall in one hit, but I feel no need with this amount of base firepower and you'll always have your secondary to help with those if you need to, whether it be a high fire rate SMG, explosive or fire weapon. Here is the current weapon outfit. I have a Born to Steel skin with a plus 4 stability boost. The DMR kit barrel as mentioned, competitor's compensator for the barrel extension, accuracy boost, auto fire for the custom, tactical handguard for the foregrip, LED combo gadget, the rubber grip, the thrust lower receiver, speed pull mag, now the other mags here can push the stability to 100 if you want. The speculator sight, a two piece stock, the LW upper receiver, 
And then for the skills to complement, Stable Shot Basic, Aced if you want to max out accuracy while standing still. And finally, Steady Grip Aced. The end result should look like this. The bare bones skills of this build are the following. A two joker setup with only joker basic, stable shot basic, resilience aced and bullseye basic, scavenger aced and extra lead aced, ammo bags will be our deployable to combat the super poor ammo pickup on the DMRs, steady grip aced, lock and load basic, surefire aced and body expertise aced, duck and cover basic, high value target aced to deal extra on far away specials in particular bulldozers, optical illusions basic on the way there, frenzy basic via bloodthirst and berserker aced, this actually leaves a solid 20 points left to do some other things with. Options for me would be 9 lives aced if you're playing with one down on, maybe a couple of points into drills if the heist has them. Bullet stormed ace is fun for some serious ammo spam, depending on your secondary choice shocking or ace could help with shields. You could even opt for jack of all trades aced and take a second deployable if so desired, the choice is really yours. The end result is clear, an efficient killing machine that's actually usable under a few different perk decks, well, those that do not regenerate health of course. Find your sweet spot with getting that huge berserker boost, and remember, once you take that first down, your berserker boost is no longer in the sweet spot for those one shot hits. Enjoy a little gameplay here with it in action, and then at the end of the video will be some info on the calculations if you're interested. Let me know if you give this a try, and let's also hope that it doesn't get nerfed, as it's a tricky thing to achieve, but the rewards are so much fun and difficult to keep. Okay, so you're here, so you either skipped to this part or waited the whole video. Either way, let's get technical. Now, my first misconception was around body expertise and how it was applied. Maybe I was blind to the description, but when it actually clicked, it made sense. I originally thought that body expertise took the headshot multiplier, let's say three for the heavy SWAT, and calculated 90% of that, that being 2.7 times. And then that just multiplied your weapons damage by that amount. For all this time, I was very, very wrong. What I realized was that it calculates on a whole different level. First, it calculates the damage that would be dealt with a headshot based on the headshot multiplier of the enemy. Again, let's go with the three times for the heavy swap. The calculated bonus damage obviously includes the original weapon damage. So that is subtracted out as we're gonna be adding this bonus to that weapon damage in the end. It really makes no sense to have it in there twice. And this is what really tripped me up. Now we have this new bonus number is washed through body expertise at 90%. 90% of this total damage is taken and added to the weapon's original damage stat. Then this total damage number is multiplied by the Berserker increase percentage you have achieved. At no point in this calculation is the helmet popping card from the perk deck included, unless you hit a headshot, in which case body expertise does not trigger anyways. Here I'll demonstrate the numbers and how they tie out. The base damage here is 171.2. These heavy swats have a headshot multiplier of 3. The calculated headshot damage is 513.6, that is 171.2 times the headshot multiplier of 3. But minus out the original damage of the weapon leaving a bonus of 342.4. Body expertise takes 90% of this dropping it to 308.2. Then we add back the damage of the weapon itself of 171.2 to get a damage of 479.4. 
Then we finally multiply by our Berserker boost of 99%, putting our end in damage at 954. Now I use the 171.2 number here as anything over that one shot kills and just shows the max damage of the enemy. Now there may well be some mistakes in all of this but I took a long time to run these numbers and reverse engineer them the best I can but I'm definitely no expert. It just so happens that I got the numbers to tie out in the end after some deep thinking and actually reading the skill description after all these years. Anyways I hope it all makes sense, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.